Greetings. This is St. Mark's Episcopal Church, Richmond, Texas. I am Chris Abbott, Christian Formation Teacher. This class is Kids Kingdom, intended for youth in grades one through five. We're happy to have you with us and joining uh, us today. If you have not already signed up for this class and you would like to do so, um, please notify the church office and we'll make sure that we can get the um, supply bags and the Bibles and the things that you need um, uh, to you so that you can participate in this class. Uh, welcome back after spring break. I hope you enjoyed yourselves, had a nice little break from school and had some fun and relaxation and uh, are ready for that last lap now till the end of the school year ahead and uh, all ready to take on the end of the school year and uh, move forward. So welcome back. We're glad to see you. Um, you'll recall that before spring break, uh, we finished our unit on uh, St. Paul. And the last activity you did um, was the construction of the uh, ancient Roman ships that St. Paul would have been using as um, he was traveling about and then finally taken to Rome. And so that was the, the last thing, and that was the end of that unit on St. Paul. And we're now <clears throat> moving forward, and we're going to be taking a um, look at uh, preparations for Easter and um, for Easter. Uh, and of course, um, you've completed your uh, Alleluia banner, and we haven't had Easter yet, so you still have to have that banner stuck away, but uh, you'll be ready to get that banner out and uh, ready to begin when when the time comes. As you know, we always begin in prayer. The Lord be with you. Dear Lord, following the examples that you always give us helps us to serve others and show love to our neighbors. Amen. All right. Um, if you would open your Bible to page 262 and 263, um, we're going to be talking about the preparations for Passover. Now, let's backtrack a minute so that we understand what Passover is. Passover is a Jewish celebration held in the spring, usually in March and April. And what Passover is, is a celebration to remember how the ancient Israelites were able to escape from Egypt back into Israel with um, Moses in the lead. And they had been there um, working as slaves and finally um, God directing Moses and then with Moses' help, they were able to escape and get out of Egypt and, and back into Israel. And Passover is the celebration every year to remember that great exit from Egypt back into Israel. Now, the other thing you need to understand as we're going to be looking at, at this uh, celebration and getting ready for that is that Jesus is preparing for Passover with his friends, but he knows what's coming after Passover, and he knows what's ahead for him in his crucifixion. So that's part of what's leading up to the whole story as we approach it um, today. Now, if you look at the picture on page 262, um, that picture of that house is pretty representative of what um, houses would have looked like in Jerusalem of that day. But what's interesting is that the second story, the, the upper part of the house, was oftentimes a larger room. And that large room was then used for um, celebrations and parties and festivals. And so um, as Passover is approaching, Jesus knows that he's going to have to have some place to be able to have some sort of a festival and a 
special celebration with the disciples. So he's going to send them on into Jerusalem to try and find the right location so that they can have their um, celebration for, um, for Passover. And that's what it would have looked like at that time. Um, the other thing to remember here is that <clears throat> he's going to be celebrating with the 12 uh, original disciples. And the picture on page 262 or 263 is showing some of the disciples there that are with him during that celebration. And to remember who those who those individuals are, uh, Simon Peter, Andrew, James, John, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, Thaddeus, Simon, and of course Judas. And so those are the, the names of those individuals who will be um, part of the reading today. Now, in uh, Jerusalem and in that part of the world at, at this time, when somebody had traveled from one place to another, when they got where they were going, their feet were dirty. Yeah, they weren't driving in a car and they weren't wearing their Nikes or their Reeboks. No, they had these sandals on. And so therefore, their feet got pretty dirty. And it was the responsibility of the servant who might be in, at that particular house or that location to wash the feet of the travelers and the guests as they came in from their, uh, from their journey. And so that's gonna be part of our story here too. And if you look at the top of the picture on 263, um, that's maybe what it looked like. You'd have a big uh, bowl with the water and then a smaller, you'd pour the water into the smaller bowl and then the people would put their feet in the bowl and that's how the feet would be washed. So that's, that's an important part of what we're going to be reading today. Okay, on 262. It was a few days before Passover, and Jesus knew that the time was near when he would leave this world and the people he loved and join God in heaven. The disciples came to him to ask where they should prepare the Passover meal. Jesus told Peter and John to go into Jerusalem. There you will see a man carrying a jar of water. Follow him and speak to the owner of the house to which he goes. Ask him to show you the room in which your teacher will celebrate Passover with his disciples. He will take you to a large room upstairs, which will have in it everything you need. There you will stay and prepare for the feast. The two men did exactly as Jesus told them. And when everything was ready, Jesus and the rest of the disciples arrived at the house and went into the room upstairs. Jesus then took off his outer robe, wrapped a towel around his waist, he poured water into a bowl and then knelt in front of each of the 12 disciples, washing their feet and drying them with his towel. But when it was Peter's turn, he objected. Why do you do this, Lord, he asked. I cannot allow you to kneel and wash my feet. Jesus said, if you do not let me wash your feet, then you will not be part of me. Then, Lord, wash not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well, said Peter. When he had finished, Jesus put on his robe and sat down. Now that I, your Lord, have washed your feet, you should wash one another's feet. I have set you an example that you may learn that all of you are equal, that the master is not greater than his servant, and that you should behave humbly and kindly toward each other. In the picture there on page 263 
is Jesus has got a towel wrapped around his waist and he's kneeling there and he's washing the feet of the um, different disciples and Peter's the one who says whoa 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 wait wait a minute why are you doing this and he wants an explanation for why Jesus um, is doing that so now what are we supposed to get out of that story we're supposed to get out of that story is that we always need to be helping others and to show love to our neighbors now washing somebody's feet is not really a very pleasant job it could have been dusty and dirty and smelly and all the more reason by doing that um, unpleasant work Jesus is showing his disciples that he loves them and he cares for them and then he's asking them wash the feet of each other so that you're showing the same love and respect and admiration and trying to help the other person as well serving others trying to help others right now of course you remember that this is all happening um, in uh, Jerusalem and the story is taking place at Passover the Jewish festival and the trying to remember what happens is that Jesus knows he's got to find a place to have this event he sends them out to find it and then they are in, up in the upstairs room when he starts to wash the feet of all of the other disciples um, that are there so what is Jesus trying to teach us by the washing the feet of his disciples well, it's not, of course, about having clean feet for the Passover <laughs> celebration. No, it's about loving, helping, and trying to be um, what the other person needs done. You're trying to help them do that is what it's, it, what it's all about. Now, you know that I always have a challenge for you each week. Think about what it is that you could be doing for your friends and your family as Jesus was washing the disciples' feet. Now, I don't mean that you're going to go out and ask your friends if you can wash their feet for them. No. But what is it that you could do? Can you help maybe a younger brother or sister with their homework? Maybe they're stuck on a math problem. Is there something you can do at home to help your family? And not necessarily a pleasant job. It might be hot or sticky or dirty or smelly or whatever it is. But what kind of help can you give to somebody else to show that we're all equal, we all work together, and we all love for each other and try to help each other when we can? So see if you can find something this week that you can do that fits into that that category all right now in your bag this week you will find that you have some new um, white um, socks men's men's socks um, you have a, a baggie that has some googly eyes and some uh, pipe cleaners and a little bit of felt in it and you have some uh, brown yarn because what you're going to do with all of those things is you're going and everybody has enough to make four puppets you're going to be making a sock four sock puppets one of them would represent Jesus and one of them and the other three could represent any one of the other disciples that you want um, the, the sock to be and the googly eyes and the felt nose and the pipe cleaner for a mouth and and hair or a beard or whatever you want to do with with your supplies and when you have finished with those um, construction of the sock puppets then you can act out the washing of the feet so here's Jesus washing the feet of Peter or washing the feet of Judas uh, whoever it might be um, the focus here on the lesson is not the construction of the puppets it's the acting out and remembering how we're serving and helping and loving 
um, each other. And your puppet might look a whole lot different than mine or better than mine. But anyway, this is the, the basic idea. And that's what you're going to be doing is acting out that, that loving and giving to each, to each other to be helpful and show that. Of course, you know that we always end each one of our lessons with the Lord's Prayer. So, the Lord be with you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you um, remember that we treat each other as equals and we try to be helpful and loving and kind to each other. And uh, any of you want to send me some uh, pictures of your uh, sock puppets, I would sure enjoy um, seeing what they, they look like. But goodbye from now from St. Mark's Richmond. Bye-bye. <laughs>